Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I am Ryan Cook. Whatever time you're watching this video, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. I'm still out there. Oh my God. Oh, perfect, I like that. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, get the net, get the net. It's a DD, get the net, bro, please get the net. Oh my God, this is a DD. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here and you're watching Common Sense Fishing. Check it out. Bam. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time you're watching this, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. So today I'm going to do a new video for you guys. What I'm going to do is we're going to do some tips and tricks from me, how I catch fish and the way that I do things because I'm a little bit different the way I fish. I do a lot of things the way you're supposed to do, but some of my fishing techniques are a little bit off, odd, or just plain different. So I'm going to share them with you guys and uh, let you know what I do and why I do what I do, okay? So we're gonna use some illustrations. Then I'm also tied in with some video on the lake. So should be a pretty cool format. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to smash that subscribe. Please uh, like, comment, and uh, don't forget we got that giveaway going on. So for hitting a thousand subs, I'm going to be giving away this rod and reel combo, custom XP speed stick from Bass Pro, along with some fishing tackle. So, thanks for watching. So, there's a giveaway video, not this one. Go check that one out if you're interested. But let's get to, oh, sorry. Let's get to today's topics, tips and tricks. So, one thing I want to talk about is a mistake I see. When you got two guys, maybe three guys, fishing in a boat, right? And let's say you're fishing in about, let's just call this 35 feet of water, let's say, or 30 feet of water, 30 feet of water. And you got one guy, he's casting right up on the shore, right? He's casting in a foot of water, maybe even, or three or four. A lot of guys may be cast into 10. They may assume, hey, the bass aren't gonna be that shallow. So they may cast into 10, whatever. You guys, some guys are gonna to try to cast it right on the shore, right? But follow me, this has got a, a good point to it. And you got another guy, his job may be to go out deep, right? So he may be, oops, sorry. This may be the guy fishing in 50 or 60. This is the guy fishing here. And I wanna talk about a common mistake that I see. I, I'll see the guys, they'll work their lure in and when their line's about right here, they'll go ahead and retrieve that in. And then this guy will be working it forever because he's super deep and he may not even cover that much water. And I see him already reeling it in. And what you're doing by doing this, this is very important, you're missing all the fish that would be right here. So if there's anything down here, you might snatch it. And if there's anything right here, you might snatch it. So depending on the lure that you're using, obviously, what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to tell you guys and remind you guys, try to remember that in order to make sure you're covering an area efficiently and say you're fishing a spot and you, and, and you're like, Hey, are there any fish here? You see a little bit on the graph, maybe not too much. It's winter. So a lot of the times, those fish, here's another tip for you, right? A lot of the times those fish will be right stuck to the bottom and they may even be piled up, right? You may see one here, right? Popped off the, popped off a little bit, but you may have a big piling of them down here. And when you look at them with your fish finder, um, they're going to look just like the bottom. You're not even going to see those. Your 2D or your, sorry, your down scan or your 3D live scope might pick that up. And it's going to just look like a different color 
Uh, so your bottom, let's say, depending on what color scale you have it in, it's gonna look like it normally looks. And then there's just gonna be this small layer of maybe like what you might assume to be silt, a, a log laying down sideways, all kinds of other different things. But those, a lot of the times, are fish smacked straight to the bottom. Okay, so back to my point here. So when you're fishing this way, you're missing a lot of these fish, right? So what I want you to try to do is, depending on the lure you're using and how you're fishing, say you're using a jig, a drop shot, an LV500, I don't care what it is, unless it's say something like a spinner bait or swim bait, those we'll talk about, and those gotta be used in a different way. I want you to try to focus on doing your same thing, and I want you to fish that guy all the way down until your line is dead down and the guy in the back right he's got to do the same thing he's got to fish his line all the way till it's dead down in the winter time when the bite is slow and you can shift the boat a few feet this way or this way and think of this as kind of the beam where you're not going to catch a lot of fish right because it's, how are you going to put your lure how are you going to how are you going to cast and put your lure like that think about it and then in the winter time a lot of the time these bass won't move very far right so it, cover an area shift your boat a little bit make sure you're thorough before you move on to the next spot now we're going to do this in a bird's eye view and I'm going to show you in a different manner of what I'm speaking to and then add on to this with an added bonus. But we'll see you in a second. We're back here at Lake Don Pedro and the focus of today's video is going to be to try to break down those tips and tricks that I showed you on the whiteboard. So we'll see you out there on the water in a minute. Let me get everything set up and dialed in. See you on the first fish. Okay guys and gals, we're gonna add on to that last tip and we're gonna cover it with something else. So let's just say you're fishing this shoreline and there's a main lake point, maybe a small secondary or a little cut or cove, not a cove, but like a little creek channel or something comes down from the mountain, right? Now here's what happens. A lot of the time I'll see guys they'll sit on the point and they'll fish at it like this and they bring the lures back right or they do like this and they fish at it and they bring the lures back or let's say you're covering water so we even go to a different type of year but let's say the bite's tough so say you're covering water so your boat is moving in this direction and you're moving along the shoreline right guys are going to move along the shoreline and they're going to cast at the shore and they're going to bring it back right and they're going to cast at the shore and they're going to bring it back here's what i like to do okay first thing i want to do is develop a pattern okay i want to find out are they on main lake points are they in creeks are they on flats are they on steep water now knowing general bass behavior right like what time of year is it is it winter is it spring is it summer is it fall bass will break the rules and they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff but they do generally follow usual habits right so in smack dab in the middle of spawn you're usually not going to want to be fishing off in 50 60 feet of water i mean you might pull some crazy stuff out your hat that way i don't know but you know and you're not probably going to want to fish vertical bluffs you're going to want to find spawning flats right so there's just general rules to the game so here's what i want to do though so let's say it's winter time we know we want to be looking either in the backs of creeks or we want to hit main lake points right so let's say i pull up and i'm going to fish this main lake point and this one and this is a not too long of an area and i'm i'm here right my boat's here i'm fine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, whichever one I choose, let's say I pull up to the best stuff first, whatever, or what you assume to be the best stuff first, right? Here's what I'm going to do. I might make a few casts at it like a traditional angler right when I pull up at it. 
And if I catch something, I'm going to try to gauge where along this spot or how deep it was that I actually got the bite and got that fish, if that makes sense, between shore and wherever I'm at. So say I'm sitting over 60, did I get my bite in 15, 25, or 30, right? So that's what I'm looking for at first. So once I'm on the point and I'm positioned here, what I like to do once I've determined about how deep they are is face myself in that depth zone. So let's say today we've determined that the fish are all in 35 feet majority, let's just say. And let's say this is the, the 35 foot underwater line. I'm not going to bother fishing like this, right? Or fishing like, I'm going to figure, okay, if I'm seeing them on my graph and I'm getting most of my bites between X and Y, say 25 and 35 feet or whatever it happens to be, I'm going to position my boat right over that. And then I'm going to fish that. I'm going to cast into that. And I'm going to work it like this. And I'm going to move my boat into it like this and again i'm going to cast into what i consider to be the premier strike zone and again i'm going to move my boat again right and i'm going to cast into that premier strike zone if that's where i feel they're at and so on and so forth and pull my boat along and i'm going to fish along that depth line of where i think they're at so i i like to fish parallel a lot now, one of the tricks or problems with this is when you're fishing a really craggly, rocky lake, it's really easy when you're fishing like this to get snagged. So sometimes you do want to kind of fish at a 45. So you want to kind of cross it. And I'm going to get into that in a minute, why we want to fish like that. So <clears throat> here's the deal. This is honestly how you're going to get more bites and probably catch more fish if you fish this way and not a lot of guys do but this is how a lot of guys know to fish that know what's up right usually they'll position themselves shallow as possible right cast down and bring their lure back up to the boat because they can cover 100 percent of that and here's the other deal constantly their lure will come into contact with stuff and will bang and bounce off of stuff. If you fish it the other way, here's what tends to happen. So let's leave this all there and say, what if you fish like most guys, right? They pull up and they cast out the bank. So if you're casting at the bank, here's what's gonna happen. Because the buoyancy of water, right? And, and, and like your weight and your lure, they don't just fall like a bullet, right? They don't fall at the same rate they would in air. So what's going to happen is you're going to lift up and you're going to pull on your, your rod, right? And that's going to drag your weight out and then it's going to slowly sink, right? And it's going to land. And then you're going to lift your rod tip and do a hop again. And then it's going to sink eight feet and then land. And then you're going to lift your rod tip. Even if you do little hops, boom, look at that. Even And you do a little hop and you do a little drag, right? And you do a little hop. Do you still see the gaps? these big giant areas you're missing. So if the fish are tucked in here, right? Or they're really close to stuff and your lure goes sailing over them. This is not an ideal way to fish. All right, guys and gals, a couple tips and tricks for these main lake points. Um, sorry. All right, guys and gals, a couple tips and tricks for this winter fishing. Um, when I say slow, I want to show you guys what I mean when I'm talking about the drop shot, okay? So sometimes I'm going to dead stick it and just leave it there like this with some limp line in it. Then I'm going to slowly reel till it gets tight. And then I'm literally just barely going to flex the line maybe. Like not even barely putting any pressure on my pole. And when I talk about a drag bite, this is what I mean right here. Okay, I get it tight and I can feel my weight moving barely, see, a line moving. So it's falling down right now. Now it's stopped. I probably moved the bait an inch or two. You see what I'm doing? 
and I'm looking at my line. See, it's already stopped. I'm good. Just in case I fall off of a cliff, right? Not me, but my bait. In case it comes down a drop off, I'm watching my line to make sure that I allow my bait to stay close to the bottom and not do that Air Jordan stuff that I was telling you about. So, you have two options. You have kind of a pro and a con, right? When you have that big old craggly bottom and you fish like this, you're less likely to get snagged, but also less likely to get bit. If you fish this way, right? Anybody who fishes from shore, they know what I'm talking about because you're gonna cast out in the deep, you're gonna pull it, snagged right away if you don't get snagged there pfft, snagged right away then you pop it over this and then somewhere along here and there's this little pebble snagged right away right you're just just this annoying never-ending battle of getting snagged so here's what i do i know it's a long ramp but follow me out here here's what i do okay same situation fraggly nasty rocky stuff right i'll go ahead and fish it the way that is going to be sorry the boat's up here i'll go ahead and fish it in a way that's going to be less snag now here's what i'm going to do to avoid air jordan i am good at just being extremely slow now if you finesse fish a lot you're going to master that art and if you haven't mastered it already, it's one that I suggest you really need to practice. Patience and slow is key in the winter. Finesse fishing sucks. It's not something we really want to do, right? A lot of people don't want to do that. And there are times in the winter, you don't have to. You can throw the LV, you can throw the A-Rig, you can slow roll a spinnerbait, you can chuck a jig, even a Ned Rig, you can bounce around and have some movement going on. You don't always have to fish a drop shot or fish this just like achingly painful slow, but sometimes you do. And when those tournaments are won with 12 to 15 pounds on these mother load lakes or even eight to 10 pounds, you will have a very high chance of cashing a check if you fish like this, right? If you learn these techniques, but you also gotta learn when the weather kicks in, when the fishing kicks in to pick up those other baits like the deep diving cranks, top water, and other lures, then you know become more well-rounded. So, anyways, back to my rant. So, how we're doing this is I'm barely, I'm barely moving my stuff. So, and then I'll feel this and I might get snagged almost, right? And I'll pop it because of the angle, I'll probably get it out. And then I'll barely drag it. Boom. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and what I'm going to do is just barely move. So I'm not going to hop it and pop it, which is much most guys have a tendency to do. Even a minute pop, even a six inch lift in your rod will translate to a big jump in the water. So if you're barely moving your rod, you can make your lure barely crawl along, right? And you can cover all of this nice and efficiently if you're ultra slow that's just the key that's the secret if you're ultra slow you'll allow your lure to crawl along all these cracks and crevices and again the other thing tying back to what i said before make sure as the dude on the boat that you're working your lure all the way down now this is especially important if you're looking to pattern the fish and find the fish. If you already know what depth they're in, well then hammer in on that depth. Don't waste your time in other areas, right? That's also what the other guy in the boat's for. While you're doing one thing, he should be doing another. Unless you're on like this hot magical bite where you're just throwing bass in the boat, well then sure, both of you guys get on it and start pulling fish out. But you should always have one guy kind of throwing the uh, jig, the, you know, the, the bigger baits, I guess you would say, for the kicker fish while you got the other guy throwing what needs to get the numbers to drop. All right, guys and gals, another 
tips and tricks for you guys out here at the mother load lakes so again remember earlier on the whiteboard i was talking about if you find out what depth they're in so right now i'm sitting in about almost 35 so like i said let's say they're in 35 and i'm sitting in 35 instead of just fishing right down at the nose of the boat trying to fish for fish that i can see or instead of casting up at the shore and bringing the lure down or casting out deep and bringing it up what i'm going to do is this general shoreline looks about the same so if it's 35 feet deep here it's probably 35 feet deep up there so based on the general lay of how the land looks of course it could change what i'm going to do like i was saying is i'm going to cast parallel and a slight angle downward so that if i come across those big boulders and rocks i'm not pulling directly into them i'm kind of pulling down them so i have a little bit more likelihood of not getting snagged and if you fish the lure slow enough you're still going to bump into all those rocks and all that stuff but because you're bringing it downhill instead of uphill and uh you're going to get snagged less and then I'm in 30, 35 feet of water almost the whole time. So I get to cover 30, 35 feet. I get to cover like a hundred foot stretch of that instead of just a 10 or 20 foot stretch. Hope that makes sense. 